As adults, lunch is often one of the meals that doesn't get much thought. And in the middle of the day, when you're really busy, it can be easy just to grab whatever you can find and throw something together. But if you don't get the balance of your lunch right, and you don't get enough protein in there, enough veggies, then what can happen is you end up picking and nibbling later in the afternoon and craving sugary foods because you haven't had something that's satisfying enough at lunchtime. So today I wanted to take you through a couple of top tips to help you get things right when it comes to your lunch meal. So the first thing to think about is just the principle of what a healthy, balanced lunch looks like. And really, if we go to a, a plate, what we wanna make sure is that we're getting at least half of your plate being non-starchy vegetables. So two good sized handfuls, like literally full handfuls of vegetables that are non-starchy or low starch. So that means everything that's not potato, kumara, um, and pumpkin basically. So those vegetables, they are great, but they need to be categorized in your kind of carbohydrate portion of the meal. So if everything else, two good handfuls. So when you're thinking about a sandwich, you know, that means it has to be stuffed to the brim full of vegetables. Soup is a really good one because you're able to get lots of veggies in there, but it's figuring out whatever you opt for, how can you get at least two handfuls of veggies at that meal? Then the next thing to make sure is that you have enough protein. So one thing that happens very often is we have quite a lot of protein on our evening meal, but not enough in both our breakfast and our lunch meals. And you need to have a, at least around 20 grams of protein. So that's around a palm sized serving um, of a protein rich food, something like meat, fish, chicken, um, it would be two eggs, a decent amount of something like chickpeas, so about half, three quarters of a cup of chickpeas and some nuts and seeds for some extra protein in there. So we need to make sure that you're having enough of those foods as part of your lunch meal. Otherwise you're gonna be wanting to pick and nibble later. Then comes the carbohydrate. Now I know that often it can be very common to be scared of carbs. We don't need to be scared of carbohydrate. It comes down to getting the quantity right for you. So if you're a really busy, active person, and um, you'll, you'll have no issue managing your weight, then you might be fine with having a bit more. If you find that having a little bit less works for you, that's fine, but you don't need to eliminate it completely. It's about the type of carbohydrate that you're having. So when you, if you're having bread or something like that, a dense grainy bread is what to go for, brown rice, quinoa, the whole minimally processed kind of grains are the best options. But a little bit of that can be helpful because often when people do not have any carbohydrate at lunchtime, you're left craving and wanting sugary foods later on because you actually needed some carbohydrate. So it's best to plan in some of the good quality ones. The last thing to include in the uh, lunch mix, whatever your meal is, is some healthy fats. That could be nuts, seeds, uh, which are easy to sprinkle on salads and, and um, put into your meal or, or have as a nibbly bit afterwards or things like avocado um, when they're available and affordable because they are a really good way to get healthy fat and they also have a surprising amount of fiber. So that's the balance overall, half a plate of non-starchy veg, then around a quarter of your plate-ish um, of your carbohydrate containing foods, which would include things like potato, kumara, um, and your pumpkin, and then you've got some carbohydrate containing, sorry, some protein as well um, in there and a bit of healthy fat. So I'm gonna take you through a couple of examples of different types of lunches and let you know what choices to make in each of those scenarios. So first off, soup. Soup is a fantastic thing to have for lunch. So I actually make a batch on either a Saturday or a Sunday in the cooler months and have it in a jug that sits in the uh, in the edge of my fridge and then it's kind of available for lunches during the week. So really, really good option, also very affordable and you can use whatever vegetables are available. Uh, the main things to think, consider with soup is it's great that it has lots of vegetables in it but just having a plain vegetable soup is not going to keep you feeling full all afternoon. And it's really easy also to think, well, I'm having soup, then I need toast with it. And there's nothing wrong with bread, but you'd probably be better off by actually adding some carbohydrate into the soup. So that could be using barley in there. It could be having plenty of chickpeas and other pulses, which have protein, but also carbohydrate in there, or using a bit of um, the starchier vegetables. So it's, 
if you're going to have soup as your main kind of component of your meal and trying to get all your vegetables, your protein and everything else in there, it is important to make sure that you're getting enough of um, the, the starchy foods in there as well. Protein is something that can often fall short in, um, in a soup. So it might be that you want to have a couple of crackers on the side with maybe some tuna or a little bit of cottage cheese or hummus with it to kind of boost the protein up, depending if you've got something like chicken in the soup or not. Because if you have, you're getting a bit of protein there, but you may need to kind of supplement it. But it is a really, really good, easy meal that can be very, very nourishing and also very affordable. So the second thing, leftovers. Leftovers are such a good thing to take for a portable lunch or if you're eating at home. The main thing is remembering, are there any vegetables in there? Because you might be left up with leftover spaghetti and some mince, but not enough vegetables. So my kids and I often take uh, leftovers for lunch the next day and we supplement any kind of leftover bits and pieces and add frozen veg into the mix. And we actually use these food pods, which um, I have available on my website, amazing. And these keep meals warm for up to six hours. So really, really good thing. If you're a person that's out and about and you need a portable warm lunch, these are absolutely fantastic. Um, really decent size meal in there and they come in a variety of different colors. So leftovers can be good, providing that you're getting enough veg. Right, the third option, the sandwich, the ever popular sandwich. There's nothing wrong with a sandwich, provided that your bread is extremely grainy. So we're, you wanna really see the visible grains in bread. So there are high fiber breads that kind of look white um, and they've added all sorts of extra things in there to boost the fiber up on the label but they're nowhere near as good as one that's got really good visible grains. So if you are having bread, opt for that. The main thing is to consider how on earth you're going to get two handfuls of vegetables into your sandwich. So if you can't get enough into it, it means having a carrot or some cucumber or a tomato or whatever is in season on the side, because otherwise you might end up needing to eat four slices of bread where really two would have been perfectly adequate with some extra vegetables on the side. So it's really thinking about how you can get enough in there. If you use wraps, it is a little bit easier to stuff them full of vegetables. Uh, but that's, that's the main thing with sandwiches is making sure that you're getting your veggies in too. Next up, salads. Now salads are fantastic for lunch. One of the things that often happens though is the opposite of the sandwich situation where you might have a salad where you have coleslaw or um, lettuce, cucumber, tomato, that kind of thing, and some protein, can of tuna, put some leftover chicken in there, and then you don't have any carbohydrate in there or healthy fat. And what that means is that you're gonna be really hungry at three o'clock in the afternoon because even though your salad was like super, you know, nourishing and had all sorts of good things in it. It does. It wasn't overall balanced. So I see so many people that kid themselves with the whole salad thing and don't actually add enough of the carbohydrate and fat in there. And then um, the problems kind of unravel later. So if you are having a salad, add some roasted starchy vegetables in there, some kumara, some potato, plenty of chickpeas in there. You might want a little bit of um, brown rice or something like that, or have a couple of crackers with it to make sure that you're getting enough carbohydrate and definitely add nuts, seeds, avocado to make sure you're getting healthy fat in there. The last one, crackers. They can be a really good base for your lunch. And actually, personally, they are a preference for me. I really, really enjoy having cracker-based lunches. The main thing is choosing the right types of crackers. So a whole grain one is a good option. So the ones that I regularly use are the Vita Wheat. Um, they are really good, quite crunchy and tough on your teeth. But if you like that, they are a solid base and um, you can add lots of nice toppings to those our corn thin. So even though these look like they're fluffy, they are actually a whole grain. They are actually still a good choice, even though they aren't um, the brown type like that because they're the whole corn. So really be a good option if you prefer a lighter one. The crackers you really want to avoid are the ones that basically um, they break apart and they go all kind of flaky or greasy in your hands, the orangey crackers, because essentially they're basically like chips. If you look at the back of them, 20, 30% fat, not a good choice um, as the base of your lunch. So going for a whole grain one is a good choice. 
how do you get enough vegetables on them? You can put sliced tomatoes along with avocado on there. You can put cottage cheese with um, some cucumber on the side. Just making sure that you are also getting enough protein and veg in that meal. And I've got lots of other ideas and pictures that I can share with you. So hopefully that's helpful. Some tips on how to get lunch sorted at home or if you're on the run. And I look forward to talking to you again soon.